The FCC, or the Federal Communications Commission, has said that Kaspersky antivirus represents an unacceptable risk to United States cybersecurity interests. Should we care about that? I'm Woody Huffines, I own the Nurse to Go in McKinney in Frisco, Texas, and this is Tech for the Untechnical. The FCC just came out and said that you can't use cybersecurity uh, firm Kaspersky Labs antivirus on any of their funding. You can't use any of the money that they provide for communications companies, for example, to buy uh, Kaspersky antivirus. And that follows along with, in 2017, uh, Kaspersky Labs ex uh, accidentally, according to them, exfiltrated some classified documents to Russia and the United States uh, military infrastructure said that you can't use Kaspersky Labs uh, antivirus on any of the computers that are funded by or run by the United States government. And we'll talk about that here in a second. The question is, does that affect us? Does that affect end users that are out there using Kaspersky Labs? Well, why is this of particular importance? It is particularly important because an antivirus application that you can't trust is probably the most serious threat to the security of your computer. For an antivirus to do its job, it has to have an unprecedented level of access to the computer. It needs to be able to look at any file anywhere on the computer. It needs to be able to look at any process or service that's running on the computer. It has to see what the computer's doing, how it's doing it. It is at the very core level of the applications that are running on the computer. It's at the core of the OS. It's at what we call the kernel. Now, to be effective, it has to do that. If, for example, you said, okay, antivirus, you can't look at the registry file, for example, on a Windows machine. Well, then the bad guys know that if they want to get bad stuff on your computer that they'll put it in the registry file because the antivirus can't look there to go find it. The same thing is true of processes. If you say that you don't want the antivirus to look at a particular process or a particular system operation on the computer, then the bad guys would know that's where they can put the bad stuff because the antivirus won't go look at it. So because of that very high level of access that an antivirus has to your machine, trusting that that antivirus isn't doing nefarious things is very, very important. So how did this stuff get started with Kaspersky as being an untrusted vendor for antivirus? Well, the first thing is the guy who founded Kaspersky used to work for the Russian military intelligence apparatus. If you look at about any of the antivirus companies, they probably have some people that work for them that used to work in the national security infrastructure because those people are really good at that and they figure they can go to the private sector and make more money. So if you went to malware bites, you might find some people that used to work for the NSA or Norton or McAfee or whatever. So how did Kaspersky get particularly labeled as a danger? Well, in 2017, Kaspersky exfiltrated some files that were classified files that belonged to the National Security Agency, or the NSA, back to Russia to do an exam on them. Now, how does that work? Well, the way an antivirus works is, in the old days, it was a very simple uh, fingerprint matching exercise, if you will. The bad the bad guys would put out uh, bad software and the antivirus vendors would find that software and they would create a signature file for that particular piece of malware. And a signature file, think of it like a fingerprint. So when, computer, when your computer downloaded information from the internet, the antivirus would look at each of the things that were coming down, each of the files that were coming down, and would compare it against that fingerprint database. And if the fingerprints matched and it said, okay, this is bad stuff, you don't want this, we'll quarantine and delete it. Well, the bad guys got hip to that. So the bad guys started writing programs that changed themselves ever so slightly so that the fingerprint or the signature would change over time. So each time the malware uh, regenerated, it would change its coding a little bit so that it wouldn't match a signature file. So then the antivirus companies couldn't rely solely on digital signatures or fingerprints to match files. Then they had to start looking at what the application was doing, or its activity, or its processes. So for example, if you downloaded a piece of, of software, or you downloaded an email attachment, and that email attachment started trying to send information off your computer, that's activity that you probably don't want happening. Or if that piece of, of software or that uh, application that you downloaded started trying to, to surf the network and start looking for other machines on your network. Probably not something you want a piece of uh, a, a PDF file to be doing is running, running routines to look at the other 
endpoints on your on your computer network. So the antivirus vendors went to looking at processes to see what that application or what that piece of code was doing on your computer. That's the way that we prevent uh, ransomware. If you click on an attachment or you go to a website and all of a sudden your computer starts encrypting a bunch of files, the antivirus goes, no, time out. This isn't a good thing. We don't want a bunch of encryption going on in our computer. So back to the Kaspersky story. There was a vendor, there was a, it was a subcontractor for the NSA that had some files on his computer that had been run by an illegal copy of Microsoft uh, Office 365. It was, and it had, some, it had some vulnerabilities in it because it was an illegal copy. And his Kaspersky antivirus tagged those files as being suspicious because they weren't real Microsoft files, they were Microsoft files with some malware in them. So the antivirus then sends those files back to Kaspersky in Moscow so that they can look at them and see is the behavior that we're seeing in these files really malware or is it something that we didn't understand and that's just part of the antivirus thing is sometimes they'll take stuff that the antivirus finds that it finds suspicious and sends it back to the home office for them to look at it. So that was Kaspersky's explanation is, well, yeah, the antivirus did what the antivirus is supposed to do. It found something suspicious and it sent it back to us for us to look at. It just happened that they were classified documents. It's a reasonable explanation. But the question is, do you trust Kaspersky? Now, the Russians are saying right now that this is just a political thing that's going on because the FCC wants to look like they're in solidarity with the Ukrainians, so they've added Kaspersky to the, vend the bad guy vendors list. And I'm, there's probably some truth to that. The antivirus and the security researchers have never found a smoking gun, if you will, that showed that Kaspersky was doing nefarious things on the computer, but do you trust Kaspersky to do those things? Do you trust the Russians, who are very big players in the cybersecurity world, to have a former Russian military guy that's running the company in charge of your antivirus? Maybe not. If you have Kaspersky and you're at the end of your at the, you're at the end of your contract, yeah, I would go ahead and replace Kaspersky. If you're worried about your antivirus, maybe it's not a bad idea to replace Kaspersky. Not a bad idea. There are some other vendors out there that are good. Kaspersky's got a very good antivirus and they perform well in the tests, but so does Bitdefender, for example, and so does Malwarebytes. Uh, at nerds to go we use Bitdefender. We've recently signed an agreement with Malwarebytes. We're going to start using Malwarebytes. And we'll talk a little bit about why that is in another video about the kinds of things that uh, that endpoint security does now that antivirus is just a plain old antivirus doesn't do. So the FCC has said don't use Kaspersky, that they can't use Kaspersky and they won't fund Kaspersky. Should you pay attention to that? Well, anytime you're doing things with computers, belts and suspenders are always a good idea. The more that you can do to protect yourself from something that's not good, Take that small step. Maybe find another antivirus as opposed to Kaspersky and follow on with the recommendation of the federal government. And if you have any questions about what a good antivirus might be, reach out to Nerds to Go and McKinney and give us a call and we'll tell you what we think. I'm Woody Huffines. I'm the Nerds to Go in McKinney in Frisco, Texas. This is Tech for the Untechnical. If you find this information helpful, hit the subscribe button below, mash the notification bell so you know when I have one of these ideas come out. Share it with your friends, like the video, and we'll talk again soon.